Penthouse. You'll never believe what happened this weekend. <laughs> I went to Jersey and Penthouse just writes back, come on, not another one. Uh, Mike is going to have my dick. Yeah. And Chelsea's going to have Mike's. Yeah. In a lot. Uh, you know what? Screw it. Um, <laughs> really getting off topic here. Yeah. What I was saying was Jersey girls were easy. I don't know where you're going <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why. Yes. <laughs> it's so easy. I've to never lead to had this. one. I don't recommend it. So, uh, there. Viewers, listeners. You ever seen Jersey Shore? No. Well, you know what a Snooky is? Like you've seen a Yeah, I've seen that thing. Yeah, that's not a lie. Yeah, you know, I've got friends, actually. I think... I think Dave and Smitty actually watched that damn show. And, uh... And, um, they like it. And they like the real world, too. I can't believe that. Well... Like, contemporary real world. We're not talking about, like, New Orleans throwback real world. Back when it was good. Back when it was... Unscripted. Okay. Or we all thought it was... It's like wrestling for teenagers is what it is. Soft scripting. I think they call it. If they don't, they should. Remember Road Rules versus Real World and how Road Rules always won? Well, Road Rules was so much more hardcore. Yeah, because it was about doing things. Yeah. Yeah, and Real World was about getting a job and paying your rent. Yeah. Yeah, that's a show. I don't (laughs) know how they ever got that off the air. We're going to do a show about a bunch of people live in a house and pay their rent. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll let you film a pilot, and we'll see it. And then they realize it only costs $30 to produce because you don't need anything but cameras. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And then, bam, reality TV happened. Oh, God, I love it. I don't. That sounds like a lie. I don't love it. Although I will admit that I watched uh, about 20 minutes of The X Factor the other day. So I couldn't figure it out. Uh, what's, what's Yeah, what is The X Factor? It's like, a, it's like American Idol, but... You know, exactly like American Idol. Oh. Yeah. Is it is that the British one? Is that the thing? I no, no. It's an. I think it's the American version of the British X Factor, which is the British version of American Idol. Got it. But it's really. So what's it called? It gets, it's called the X Factor. Okay, so it's the British version of American Idol. No, no, no. The British version of American Idol is the X Factor, and there's an American version of the X Factor as well called the X Factor. Uh huh. Yeah, it's kind of meta. So which one? The is American it? X Factor. The American X Factor. Yes. Okay. And uh, did you get anything good out of it? You know, honestly, for 20 minutes of watching, I saw this really overweight black woman belt out some soul music like I've never heard. Like, and then she had to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. Yeah, no, she did. It was. She actually, did. Yeah, it was really hilarious. She had pneumonia the day before she came in for her uh, not interview, but whatever they call it audition. Audition. And uh, apparently just had enough adrenaline in her to get out her three and a half minutes of song, tell Simon that she loved him, accept their accolades with them saying that she sounded like a legend, gotten back, started not being able to breathe, and got rushed to the hospital. Oh, it was such, awesome. such is life. That's what happens when you try to succeed with pneumonia. <laughs> Start with it. Failure? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can't succeed when you have pneumonia because that's a sign of weakness. Uh, yeah. Okay. Weak lungs. Lungs are weak. You yeah. Know, you've got pneumonia. Uh, yeah, I hold no esteem to most most television, actually. I don't have television anymore, so it's probably a good thing. It's really better. I'm saving a lot of money. You are saving quite a bit of money for something you don't like. So I'm, I'm pretty well off. I was watching uh, some things uh, the other day. Uh, yesterday. It was yesterday, this morning, early, about uh, Henry Rollins and how he's always tried to one-up uh, Iggy Pop, actually. Because Iggy Pop is like, you know, pre-punk. Okay. With the Stooges. And, okay. You know. Yeah. And he would just put on this wild show, and Henry Rollins looked up to Iggy Pop. And so he'd always try to, you know, if you ever got a bill where they both played. Yeah. He always tried to be the better man, you know, put on the better show. Okay. Like, yeah, I'm going to really outdo him, really outdo him. And Rollins, (laughs) you know, he tries it. He tried it three times. And on the third time, it was just, you know, he trained for, like, in the gym and on the diet and just gave it his all. Yeah. And Iggy just 
<laughs> in under seven minutes, you know. Yeah. He just goes out there and he's wow and runs across the stage, knocks everything over, and he's like already bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so he said Iggy outdid him every single time. Just not even trying. He's just yeah. the man. He's just being Iggy Pop. And and Iggy and the Stooges are from like southern Michigan and they're <laughs> Iggy Pop himself. I don't I can't remember his name. But he's this really <laughs> really like conservative mannered gentleman. Like, oh yeah, how's it going, fellas? Okay, I'll see you in the studio. Oh, nice to see you again, guys. Oh yeah, you Jim, uh you know, Derek, Rob, oh yeah. nice to meet you again. Oh yeah. hey Henry, how's it going, Hank? Oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Yes, Jim. And very uh, very uh, you know, from the cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a Midwestern boy. Midwestern boy, you know, he talks, he's got this really low voice. <laughs> he does. He really has that voice. Uh, <laughs> just the nicest guy you ever met. Just come sitting in the studio with Iggy Pop right Just now. come sit in the studio, and, uh, and then he'll just go out st- on stage <laughs> and bleed. <laughs> and, you know. Well, you know, it's a job. <laughs> it's a fun job, but it's still a job. We learned that from Cypress Hill. What did they say? Verbatim that it's, it's it's a fun job, but it's still, still a, a job. job. Yeah, you know, being a rock superstar, living large. Oh, that soda. Was... Good thing I wore black today. Yeah, I knew that would happen. And he's never going back to any other color. <laughs> it's, it's so kooky. You'll see him in black all the time now, ladies. It's yeah, so slimming. Like those yellow shorts. Christ. No, those aren't slimming. They're She's not slimming, slimming at all. Yeah. She's pretty narrow as it is. Yeah, that's true. So is that dog. It's the ugliest hooker I've ever seen. Where? I can't see it anyway. Uh, well, it's probably not a hooker. But. So uh, there's this thing in town uh over the weekend called do milwaukee i don't know if you're familiar do milwaukee d-o it stands for doors open milwaukee okay and um it's like a hundred some places that you can never see supposedly it's pitch that are not open to the public generally but you you know you always wonder about them just walking by or driving by like oh we'll go in that place you know yeah and they had the doors like places that our participants had the Do Do Milwaukee yeah. flyers up front there, okay. like big banners out front of their businesses and whatever. But I'm looking at some of them, and I don't know if this is a, a taxpayer thing. I don't know if it's yeah. a private thing or not. But I feel like if it's a taxpayer thing, man, what a racket! Because yeah. some of these things, and like I'm saying to, to to the public again, yeah, I don't know who funds this. Oh yeah, no, no, it's a mystery to me too. So I can look it up in a second, but uh, it, some of these places are just like churches and hotels. I'm thinking, you really? You can't just go there regularly. I you, thought those places were open. Those are Isn't open. Kind of you can idea? go there. Hotels like more open than anything. More open they're, than most things. They're like extremely open. Yes. They're, like the Astor Hotel was a participant. See, in these, they're like the. The, the Siemens whore of right. letting people in. Um, that's what they do. That's what... And they're open 24 hours a day. Yeah, always. Always. Accepting new challengers at all times. <laughs> yeah. Like, churches, too. I'm pretty sure if you knock on a like door of a church... Pretty much. You can generally get in. Like 9 to 5? At least. Yeah. yeah. 40 years ago, it used to be 24-7. Really? And the priest would show up the and be like, Oh, my child, what's going on? And you'd be like, God, yeah, just did like three ounces of blow off this hooker and... I feel guilty, and they're like, "Oh, let's go give some penance." And so, pregnant pause. I don't know what what the heck is uh, going on with this do Milwaukee, but it's done now. I kind of wish I had known about it, cause like I like I'm curious about stuff all the time. Like I always want to know things and get into things and cause trouble and touch stuff. Yeah, I mean, some of these places are like I've never heard of, and like there's some merit to. Sing. I like the top floor of the U.S. Bank building was last year, I know, oh, which I have been there, but you, you can you can literally just go in the U.S. Bank building and ride it to the 30th floor, and uh, the commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig's office, yeah, is right on top of there. It's got big glass windows. If you go, 
Uh, I didn't go in there, obviously. Yeah. But I can see it because they've got big glass windows separating it from the hallway. The yeah. Area. And it's got this desk that's pretty long and a great view looking south. Okay. Towards uh, the, the nice lake. view. Yeah. yeah. And um, so just as well, there's this huge baseball on the on the rug. So. So like it's embroidered with a baseball. Not a, or not like, a, there, like a big baseball design. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I got it. You know, in the so Was it actually like a four-foot baseball just sitting there, like chilling? A couple of eyes, like, hey, what's up? Uh, Every time you walk by, it just screams, foul ball, and then farts. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. I, I know what I'm getting Bud Selig for uh, for Christmas this year. It's going to be a farting baseball that screams foul ball every time it makes a fart noise. That's a good... pa- I've just pended that idea, by the way, China. So <laughs> don't even try. <laughs> that is mine. I went to the Astro Hotel. This is exactly how ridiculously open hotels are. Yeah. I went to the Astro Hotel like a week ago, actually. Yeah. Not even. Days ago. And I wrote it. I, I, I went right past the person at the desk because it's a hotel slash um, yeah, people know. live there. They're yeah, they don't staying. know. Yeah. Right. So I walked right past the front desk. Yeah. I went to the elevator, took it to the ninth floor. Yeah. Which is the top floor of the Astro Hotel. And there's a little uh, outdoor area. Oh, outdoor. like a little walkout uh, patio kind of thing? Patio kind of thing, but it's uh, like a deck. It's okay. It's a deck. All right. I got you. And there's a sign that says... Um, okay. Yeah, swallow that tooth down. Whatever that was. Uh, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. deck hours. Okay. I go, okay. Push the door open. <laughs> <laughs> and just walk out. Oh, this is not, nobody's going to stop me. Cause yeah, well, what are they going to do? Like, politely ask you to leave. Right. Be, yeah, you know, exactly. Their first move. What are you doing here? Oh, I was just looking. Can you leave? Sure. Yes. Yeah, generally. I bought good. a soda from their vending machine. Oh, you, you're in for hours then. Right. <laughs> So dollar a hotel soda what is it like 94 dollars <laughs> and like your firstborn it's it's a dollar that's still ridiculous for a vending machine soda. it is it was a can wasn't it yeah it was a can yeah see this is what happens that's how they get you every time i go to trade shows i always forget to bring food and drink so i end up eating out of the vending machines in the hotel until the trade show when i eat myself sick on fast food and crap but i want to go to one of those you know, I'm sure I make them sound like a lot of fun, and they are for like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh. but, but seriously, after the first 10 minutes, you've already seen all the good stuff, and then it's oh. a lot of waiting, standing around. Oh, that's... Pushed out of the way by families of sick people. Terrible. The sick. Who I still respect <laughs> the and love. The sick. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> I'm not making that up. They own gas stations. Like, it's a reality of my business choice is when I go to places where a lot of people who run gas stations, I find myself surrounded by sick. And uh, Iranians, oddly enough. But those I could do without. I don't know that that's so odd. It's not odd. It's just, like, you know, if I was in, like, the bait business or something, like, it would be a lot of Asian people. Like, if I was in the shoe business, it'd be a lot of Italians. But, like, I'm in the gas station business, so it's a lot of brown people from places with names I can't pronounce. Okay. Uh, you know, and I gotta... <laughs> There's a cultural difference. Like, Why? Is, okay, hold on. Wait. What, what? What now with the questioning? Okay. Okay, go on with what you're gonna say, and I'll ask well, you You know, it's the cultural thing, because, like, uh, and I actually know this from other people who have gone through the whole experience that I'm going through of learning about the, the brown people's culture, is that like the shoving, pushing, screaming, yelling. It's rude to me because I'm an American. Like, you know, you stand in line, you wait your turn, you get your stuff, you get out of the way. Where they come from, that's not how they're raised. They're raised, you get in, get stuff, hang around, talk to your friends, high five, slap backs, smile, kiss, hug. You know, it's all in this big, writhing mass of humanity. Okay. And uh, since they are the majority when you're at one of these shows, you end up having to deal with a lot of that. You know, you're standing there like, oh, I'm going to go over to the church's chicken booth, get a piece of chicken, and chat up the salesman. And you walk over there, and then they all come over in a big heap, and they're like, oh, chicken, this, or you know, but da da And it's just so much. Oh. And you kind of have to just back off and get out of the way, because you're never going to be able to American. <laughs> you can't American your way through that. Like, you really just have to get out of the way. Oh, wow. And it's, you know, they, and these places, they, they, they welcome you to bring your wife and your kids and your family. You know, they try to get everybody involved. 
So and they do because it's free or food. Some pederasty. <laughs> <laughs> pederastason. Pederastason, you know. Yeah, that's what Dom likes. The old pederastize. Uh, you know, you get you get there though, and it's you know they got a lot of kids because that's also a cultural thing. They're like Catholics, except they're not. Okay. So they got all these kids, and there's the wife, and she's not speaking to anyone, and the husband and his brother and their nephew. Like they all, it's just very crowded. Okay. Smells of curry. Yeah, that's not Iranian. No, well, there's Iranians too, but oh, okay. they, they don't have a smell. Oh, they don't, they don't smell of curry. Got or, it. Or Iranians. I don't know what Iranian people eat. You're right. McDonald's probably. Uh, I, I have no idea. Maybe nuclear weapons. I can't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't eat uh, Middle Eastern food as it is. Oh, no? So oh, I guess with the. That's what I'm living with. Not, not allergies. And yeah. Allergies. It's, I gotta walk a very thin line with the food that I eat. And it's, it's less annoying than a lot of people think. But we love to make it annoying. Yeah. Because that's fun. So, again, what with the Asians and the fishing lures? What? That fishing bait. Bait. Fish bait. They make that? Well, and Italians make, make shoes? Hold on. Wait, what? Well, it's just a very overly generalized stereotype, but Asian people do a lot of work with fish. Oh. All the largest fish markets in the world are in Asia. Oh. And Italians do shoes because they have the best leather in the world. So. Okay. I was extrapolating to make a point. I, I get it. But I'm probably not wrong. Because I'm never wrong. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I can't. It's facing the other way. Tell, tell me more. Oh. Look at that. Ooh. So, uh, Barrett. Okay, let's get to news. Let's talk about the news. For like 20 minutes, I think. We could do 20 minutes of news. There's at least that much worthy. Uh, You want to do the big one, or I got this other one here? Which big one? The president in town. Oh, was that a big thing? I, yeah, I, I guess that's probably the biggest thing that happened over the weekend or the last week, really. News. I guess. Um, I don't know. Say, I wasn't there. That was I. The people I asked about it said that he was entertaining. They didn't. I didn't really give much in depth about uh, what he said. It's almost like they don't listen. Or Weird. how he said it, or the performance itself, or. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really gives you a lot of faith in it, doesn't it? Yeah, I uh, don't think they're the the English majors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust them. I the English majors. <laughs> We're not in uh, my close group of friends, uh, or rather, the people whom I talk to yes. were not English majors. Okay. So I'm certain that they could have, if they were, given a much better description of the performance itself and the content of the speech. But uh, being as it is that they were not the English majors, they didn't have much to say. Like, oh, yeah, it's good. What does that tell me? That tells me zero things. They haven't persuaded you then. The, I mean, they haven't. The I would like to see him speak because, you know, Obama campaign mo mode is like. His only effective The mode. best thing that he does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Christ. Strong suit. Getting money, yeah. He's well, he's, you know, out. spent 70% of his career campaigning, so it makes sense that he'd be good at it by now. Yeah. I actually wonder if he would do better as a campaign manager or speechwriter for someone else. Paul Ryan was a speechwriter. And look at him go. Look well, at him writing his own speeches. As long as you keep him away from the AARP, he's good. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that guy's real. Hey, he comes in the station. I'm going to snatch the hat off of his head one of these days. Just be like, stop it. Just just stop it. Uh, no, I... <laughs> so then the news reports come out, though, about this Obama thing. President being in Milwaukee. Yeah. And uh, there was... Somewhere between five and eighteen thousand people there, and uh, I guess the campaign said eighteen thousand, and that's what's being reported uh, in the major news outlets, uh, including the Journal Sentinel, uh, some of the smaller punditry, the blogosphere-ers who were there, uh, five thousand, if that. The arena wasn't full, so they're going from from numbers that are more reasonable. Uh, I guess uh, yeah. what I was reading is that 
the people who were there are describing it as about 5,000 people in the arena, which is where it was. Yeah. With some people outside the arena standing listening. Whereas in the major media outlets, they're saying there were 18,000 people in the park where he gave the speech, and they're avoiding mentioning the arena even by name. Now, of course, the the, mm. the far right wing fringe element of the blogosphere is screaming that this is a conspiracy to hide the fact that if you said it was the whatever arena, well, I don't remember what arena it was, but yeah. arena was, you know, there's only 5,000 seats, so there's no way you could reconcile saying 18,000 when only 5,000 fit legally. So the conspiracy continues. It's he spoke at the BMO Harris Pavilion. So how many is that seat? I don't know. That's the newer no one, idea. right? Is that the yeah, one it's the newest one? one. Yeah. Okay, so that's probably five thousand seats. Probably. So you figure maybe if they had another thousand, fifteen hundred in the space around it. In the space around it, yeah, or maybe the whole grounds. I don't know. Well, it's, I, just, I, having just recently been to that area with Summerfest, I don't see thirteen thousand other people standing around outside of that arena. There just isn't. Logistically, the way it's set up, you could not fit that many people. I think you can fit that people on the whole grounds, but on the whole grounds, but they're not. It's not a crowd then; it's a dispersed crowd. Yeah, that's that's like Macy's claiming everyone in the mall is at their store. Oh, it's the Friday okay. after Thanksgiving. There's 34 million people in this Macy's right now. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's the whole island of Manhattan is at that Macy's right now. Yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Well, I'm just saying, you know, you get this. It might be arbitrary, but you have to have lines. It's a campaign. Yeah, it's a stupid. I don't know. It's a dumb argument. It's is something. there like a microphone outside? No, that's. Is that is that your thing? No, I hooked that, that thing. Up? It fell off. No, there's no microphone outside. And microphone three is on. It's not or it is. No, it's not. It's not on. Not weird. Really high class microphoning. Yeah. Look at the puppies. Burk, burk, burk. Oh my god. Chocolate and vanilla. Those Come are on. really uh, cute dogs right there. So, um, what do I have here? I've got something here. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. Tom Barrett. Looks like John McCain, taller and less cripply. Should do even more to help students burdened by large student loans and unemployment. Says that Everett, uh, the company that runs Everest College. Everest College? So. I can be a paralegal. He's. No, you can't. Maybe I can do medical billing. (laughs) From home. I ask you. Now, Barrett says. I ask you to extend the offer to pay off student loans to those individuals. The, what, the ones that went to Everest College? Yeah. He is asking the company that runs Everest oh, College. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. To pay off. So to just the say, student loans. you don't owe us any money now? He's, does he, has he never taken an economics course? Is That's, uh, this is what. It's a for profit <laughs> college. It's not a real college. <laughs> I know that. Well, how does he not? He's the mayor. You would think that they would like give him an index card, like things that aren't real, and like Everest College, <laughs> Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> like, shouldn't that all be? Well, I, I'm not, no, 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 no. Because yeah, like, it's not like I'm like this this font of of flawless information. No, no, but, but everybody know knows like, that Everest College is a racket. Oh, yeah, with Phoenix and. Yeah, Phoenix, Brian Stratton, the, the, what is that, the, the Herzing, Herzig, whatever it is. Yeah, you know they're all crap. You know, if you're going there, great. Do if you got nothing else to spend your money on, that's great. You know, rent or food or it'll life. never give you a career though. Those colleges will just not. Yeah, when you go, when they sell you the idea of the college and they hand you the flyer and they're like, oh, this guy is in a really great position in the U.S. government and he's got a degree from the University of Phoenix. Look him dead in the eye and go, well, who else? And they'll be like, oh, it's just that one guy. <laughs> and then what they won't tell you is that he actually then went to a real school, got himself an actual degree. Yeah. And then went into that and then called Phoenix and said, hey, you can use my name if you pay me. And they're like, well, we do have all these profits. We might as well use them to advertise with this guy's face. And then he gets paid every time. They, you know, it's just, Go to a state school <laughs> if you're going to go. Or don't go to school at all. Apprentice. Become an electrician, make thirty dollars an hour, and set your own hours. Why a state school? That's I don't. Well, I'm rather than like, a university. Well, I'm just saying, like okay. instead of like uh, oh, right, uh, yeah. Phoenix or something, you know, if you're gonna 
If you're gonna lowball yourself, go to community college and get yourself an associate's degree in accounting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Are yeah. You, are you good. We done. Does everyone? <laughs> do you all follow me? Okay. Yeah. Are we good here? Okay. Cause your business degree from Phoenix. Yeah, I wouldn't wipe my ass with that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Nope. Nope, because I wouldn't want it to get stuck. <laughs> All right, here's a here's a cool story, too. Okay. I love cool stories. Here's a great story. Is this the one about parking spaces? What? Continue. Oh, I don't want you to wait. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. I don't want to fucking wait. For our fucking lives to be over. <laughs> I hope yes. I hope it didn't get that. It did. It probably pretty did. heavily. That's okay. It was, you might as well have just sat there. Woo! Yeah. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're gonna um, beep out every other word that he says just to make up for that. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the words are. That's fine. Beep. 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 Okay. We're, so. All right. Much. Much. Okay. Wisconsin AP. AP? SAT scores above national average. Uh, I'm happy with that. That's happy good. With that. Much like Wisconsin's average ACT score, which tied for second highest in the nation, the state's Ooh. average SAT score towered, towered over the national average. Oh, God, what is it? For all three subjects on the test. Oh. Last month, Wisconsin posted its lowest... Wait, hold on. ACT <laughs> average composite score since 1996, but still outperformed nearly every other state. Oh, so our lowest since 1996 is still better than everyone still else. Still better than nearly every other state. Though the SAT is by far the less popular of the two national college readiness tests among Wisconsin high schoolers, it's students who did take the SAT beat their national peers on average by close to 100 points on all three 800-point subjects, critical reading, math, and writing. Oh, that's right. They changed the test. Uh, the SAT sets its benchmark for college readiness at a combined score of 1550, totaling the three subject scores out of possible 2400. Okay, what was ours? Mine was 1120, but when I took it, it was a 1600 scale, and I was still high on acid when I took it. <laughs> so I think I should get an extra 200 points added for that. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to point out that I still did better than April, who spent like six months of her life in prep classes for the SAT, filling out books and reading about it and learning. And I showed up, never having seen a standardized test before, still high on LSD with Rob. We were actually still both high. I remember very specifically because they wouldn't let us out to have a cigarette. <laughs> and we really needed one. So we decided to just blaze through the tests as fast as we could. And then we found out that they're timed sections. So we were stuck anyway. And I think he got like a 1250. I got an 11, I think it was 11, 20 or 1170. April ended up with like a 1040. <laughs> Suck it, April. <laughs> and and so this. So okay. she went to fashion school. So which one is, okay, what's the perfect score then? Perfect score was 1600 at the time. 16, I thought it's 2400. It is now. They changed the test. It used to be two sections, just reading and arithmetic. And now it's reading, arithmetic, and Math writing. Or writing? Yeah. I don't like that. That's understandable. Not most people do. That's why the creative writing degree is so easy to get. No one's in there. I don't like that. Okay. I like you. I, I like you a lot. Too. I like I like you too. Um <laughs> So that's cool. Suck it most other states. Pretty much. Yeah. That's cool. I've been to a lot of other states. Not a lot, but you know a few. I've been to a lot of other states. Pretty much everything east of the Mississippi. And I think I once accidentally flew over Michigan. No, Minnesota. And everyone's on the west side. What, uh, Minnesota. It is Minnesota, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Twin Cities. Very oh, wait, no, I've been to the Twin Cities. <gasps> I've been to Minnesota. Huh. How exciting is that? I can skip that now. Oh, you've been to uh, <laughs> Kansas City. Uh, I've been to Kansas City and, and... Everybody hates that place. It's a terrible place. <laughs> this is the thing. I was in Kansas City in, uh, I think it was in... Tennessee. Missouri. Missouri? Where was it? There's one in Missouri and one in Kansas. Yeah, I was in the one in Missouri, which is even worse, I think. Casimo. Casimo. Sounds like a Asian cell phone company. Casimo. Two of my friend's bands wrote songs about Kansas City, Missouri, and how they... Well, okay, the Box Social got uh, their stuff broken into, their van broken into in, in KC, Missouri. Yes. And so... 
Yeah. So they wrote a song about sadness and despair. They wrote a song about that. Yeah, pretty much. And (laughs) then Bob Gunn also wrote a song called Kansas City. Yeah. Kansas City, Missouri. Daniel Durst was in Bob Gunn. I know Danny. Yeah. Yeah. So. I once offered him taxi fare after he got fired. It's pretty funny. Oh, God. (laughs) That's. Oh, yeah, because he had to walk to the store. Yeah, it was pretty far distance. That sucks. Yeah. Well, you know, life. Life. Okay, so what were we talking about? I don't know, but it got awesome there for a second. Okay, your your trip to Kansas City, Missouri. Oh yeah, it's just a rotten little hole. Like I don't <laughs> recommend it for anything. We got uh, it was, the plane got grounded there, and uh, we had to spend the night. So they put you up in this hotel. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like the hotel they use in movies and TV to like epitomize bad hotels like the oh you know the guy the <laughs> it front. was that place yeah you it was went that there? place that was the place what the guy with the coke bottle glasses and like the half bald head and he's kind of wearing a greasy white muscle shirt underneath a pale yellow short sleeve <laughs> dresser like, hey guys you need a room <laughs> oh, <you> wanna, <laughs> no way you want, yeah no, i swear to this God. guy yeah this guy exists and he works at this little hotel i don't remember what the hotel was called Thank <laughs> but it's God. in kansas city missouri it's in kansas city missouri you can't miss it just look for the the desperation <laughs> go in that direction and then when you hit horror make a right and it's uh it's the hotel at the end of the aisle <laughs> yeah so then we're like okay well we're stuck here we need to eat well, there's nowhere to eat in Kansas City, Missouri. They literally, they subsist only on tears of innocent people. And that's how they get by. So we were trying to find food. We ended up just going to a, it wasn't even a 7-Eleven. It was like a 6-12. And uh, to get whatever was handy. Eating candy bars and crackers with a glass of milk that was one day short of expired. And that's how that evening went. Awesome. But like every, just the people everywhere. Sucked. It's not that they sucked. They just had this whole, like they knew they were in the wrong Kansas City. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they wanted to live in Kansas City in Kansas. Like that would have been okay because that makes sense. Kansas City, Missouri is a more popular one. It's a more populated one, I'm pretty sure. I think everyone's there for the irony, not realizing that it's just sad. (laughs) (laughs) Like seriously. I don't know. Wow, you've got... I didn't know that your thing with Kansas City was this big. No, I really don't... I'm just not impressed. <laughs> not impressed. It's like the Detroit of dead cities. I was kind of thinking the other day that Milwaukee's probably like the Baltimore of the Midwest. <laughs> no, it's the Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But I, I would think of like Cincinnati and Cleveland to be the Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. Well, let's see, if you go... Hold, you, you, you fill the silence with your wild rhetoric and i'm gonna okay i'll put on some music don't do that i'm gonna put on music. why are you gonna put on music because that's just fills silence what you could talk i'm just looking something up on the interweb uh I, I'm, I'm not i'm almost you know, there the monologue unless i'm doing it myself but i'm not <laughs> that's uh Oh, the men. Men? Is it raining men? Hallelujah. See what I was going to say before it got really weird there. short of it it's avant noise jazz yeah that's... you don't get it nope it's no fun. one does people claim to they're lying yeah what it means is that they have nothing else interesting about themselves so they claim to understand no that. it's not supposed yes. to be understood oh. are you sure yeah oh so I, it's so underground that even the devil doesn't understand y- yes yes yeah. yes but... I can't find it. I'll have to email you the article when I find it. But a while back, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did a comparison of uh, Pittsburgh and Milwaukee. Yeah, because we went to the Super Bowl against the Steelers. No, no, no. Like even it was when I was married still. Oh. So it was just like a, like a comparison of the two cities, right. like and how Milwaukee is like three years behind Pittsburgh in that rebirth. Oh. But then Pittsburgh kept going. Milwaukee stopped. 
segregation. Oh, I'm not going to Pittsburgh. You should go to Pittsburgh. You'd like it. You know, you say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. I think some people might have heard me. Uh, people? Good. No, nah, I don't want to go to Pittsburgh. There's yeah. just, it doesn't seem like anything. You don't know what you're missing. You're right. The food, the the hills, it's a beautiful country out there. The Jews, they're they're everywhere. Really? Like real Jews. Pittsburgh. No, not yeah. There's this whole neighborhood called Squirrel Hill. Very Jewish. Wow. They have matzah shops. That's, that's a real thing. That's amazing. I need some unleavened bread. Let's go down to the unleavened bread store, <laughs> and there it is. Like oh wow, everything you need not leavened. Oi. So, you know, Dear God. If you like matzo, it's pretty delicious. Pittsburgh. Soup. Delis everywhere. Big deli sandwiches. God. I, pounds of roast beef on a ride. Okay, so then... Mayo. Then what's Baltimore? It's got really sweet street lamps. Now, I mean, what would be the Baltimore of the Midwest? Would that the, be Cleveland? The Baltimore of the Midwest? The Baltimore of the Midwest, huh? Who's got nice street lamps? Literally. Is it Appleton? It would have to be a big city. Appleton is a big city. No, it's just... <laughs> not like Baltimore, though. Okay, so Chicago would be New York's parallel, obviously. Yeah, all the crime, but colder. Right. Yeah. And the populace. And the low employment rate. And the big. And the teachers walking out. And so... And then you said Milwaukee would be Pittsburgh. Yeah. We're drawing parallels here. We're drawing parallels. What would Cleveland be? Cleveland, Ohio would be... Would be Baltimore. I can see that. Okay. Baltimore. Philadelphia would be... Uh, St. Louis. Eh, nah, St. Louis is... I've been... Incomparable. To what? Probably Indianapolis. Philly and Indy. Philly and Indy? Yeah, I could see that. St. Louis could be... Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> Where all the easy women come from. <laughs> you know I'm right. Uh, my buddy Dave is from St. Louis. Is he an easy woman? No. Does he live with a guy who lives with a girl from Jersey? <laughs> he did. He did, <laughs> see? Oh, what a tangled web. <laughs> well, yeah, they're my Chicago friends. They, they're two houses, I mean. There's the two of them. Where did they come up with their name? Explain. <laughs> I've been curious about this. You really want me to? I really do. I kind of I've, like you've said it so many times, and I've thought late into the night when I can't sleep. Like, why would they call themselves? Do you never houses? thought that? Late I into actually the night. not late into the night, but I've thought it while sitting on my couch. Like, I wonder why. Okay, well, but I want to know. Here, let me just start with this. Okay, so two houses. Wait, got you don't get that? Two houses <laughs> got their noob. name. From, uh, I hate to give this away. I feel like I'm, I'm definitely giving this away. Yeah, give it away. So, they got their name from a playoff. It's, uh, they, okay, here's what they say to people. They say to people that, um, <laughs> it's, uh, like the two houses of Congress, you know, like, uh, the Senate and, uh, the House. You know what I mean? These big monolithic or, or uh, biolithic, whatever, lithic. These two big objects. Well, that form one object. The monolithic object being the Congress itself. So that's what they tell the audience or like people that ask, you know, how you got your name. Dave Sadaway really likes the name. Uh, what they actually got it from is. That <laughs> Are you familiar with uh, the Spin Doctors? Yes, I'm familiar with Spin Doctors. Okay, so that song. Two Princes? Yeah, I know the song. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the station's crashing. Oh. So, sorry. Yeah. What station? <laughs> that My gas station. Oh. It's currently resetting itself repeatedly. Continue. Oh, God. Keep going. Two princes, they're here to adore you. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a play off that song. So two houses are here to adore me? Right. 
are they right here before me? It's a it's a play of that song because they're they're really influenced by, not not really particularly uh, uh the Spin Doctors, but a lot of '90s stuff, and a lot of earlier stuff too. I know that Mike uh, loves Bruce Springsteen. Well, that's you know not everyone's perfect. <laughs> And uh, Dave has uh, gone really into gin blossoms lately, so I'll follow him down. Yes. To Allison Road. To Allison Road. Yeah. Does he like Candlebox? I don't know if he likes Candlebox. He probably does. They're all the same. They're band. they're really <laughs> influenced by yeah. I mean, nineties <laughs> pop and ninety. I, I was rock, there in the nineties. I remember. I was kind of there. I mean. I was more there than you. You were you were much way more, more there. Yes, you yeah, were. Yeah, I was all over there. Yes, you were. Yep, yep, yep. So how's the gas station? This... Uh, I'm waiting for an update now. Okay. I'm doing a soft reset in the middle of the hard reset. It's setting itself. Did did uh, Sean have to tell everybody to leave? Did he have to? No. He <laughs> probably guessed. <yes. laughs> if I had to guess. I, I mean, yeah. He says the pumps are still running, so. Oh. It's not a complete catastrophe, just the register is dying, which, you know, hey, awesome. Hey, guess who's going to call tomorrow? Huh, no one. <laughs> <laughs> no one? Can't afford repairs. Brian? I have to no? fake this one out, but we'll Ooh, see. Ooh, fake. <laughs> oh, if, it, if it comes after the, the first reset, it's not a problem. Kinda if it like, takes two resets, then it's an issue. Kind of like if you when you fake sick for your parents. It's kind of like that. Yeah, what? and then they actually take you to the doctor, and you're not sick. No, you didn't. You lick. Didn't you ever see uh, Ferris Bueller? You lick your hands. <laughs> yeah, you lick the the clammy hands. You lick your hands. You're like ah, I'm clammy. I I'm have like, seen like that a, movie. I'm like a clam. Too many times, but I know I never remember it. I don't remember most of the movies that I see, even if even if I love them, and I've seen them ten times, I don't remember them. So uh, it's. It's because you have holes in your brain. It's because I have holes in my brain, and I don't really care about movies. I know that feel, bro. <laughs> yeah. Surfing the web with Dom and Bill. <laughs> I'm not really surfing the web. I'm looking for... Uh, looking at Japanese animated porn? Oh, I'm just looking at my songs. Oh. Seeing if I couldn't fade out with one. Oh, why are you going to fade out with one? You could fade out with us doing like we always do, where we giggle and laugh. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's my favorite part. It's the whole reason I sit here for half an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> so I can say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. I'm like a small child. Okay. I want to play something. Oh, do you? If I could find it. You can't. It's not there. It's here. There's no there there. Way there. I am way there, man. We might be the only radio show on today. Because I don't see O'Day giving us the stink guy from anywhere. Okay, I need YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, it's from Two Princes. Two Princes or Two Houses? Oh, here comes O'Day. Oh, he's coming for us with his beady little eyes and his satanic goatee. Yeah. We're probably supposed to start wrapping up in <laughs> I mean probably. Probably. Uh, I'll do it, but if we have whatever. to doesn't I'm not really feeling it. I feel like we should just keep going. So uh the president wish my whole life had a set of headphones on it so I could hear what the heck was going on all the time. Instead of constantly pretending and just nodding along. Oh here. I think I'd be a much more effective human. Here hold on. I'm holding. Here hold on. I'm holding. Wait. I'm waiting. President Obama. Here, we gotta... Here, ch check out what this guy says. They give this guy a microphone. Do you believe that? I don't know which guy it is. Is it O'Day? Because I wouldn't give him a microphone. They give Obama a microphone. Is the outside speaker still working, guys? I guess not. No. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Okay. Now, I watched the uh, Republican uh, convention. He's on Letterman. And, uh, oh, uh, I don't know whether you watched it. I don't know. Uh, did, did you watch it? You, you, you know, I didn't watch it. I got to admit. Yeah. yeah. They, I, but I, 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 I understand they, they talked about me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, but now here's what I found troubling, and I want you to help me through this. Yeah. Uh, they had the clock, the, right. the debt countdown clock. And I mean, this thing is it's, going it's like crazy. Right, right. And it's several trillion dollars. Right. 
Now, uh, what, what, what is that? Well, here, here's what happened. Uh, you know, we had a surplus when Bill Clinton was president. That means extra money. Extra money. It was projected to continue to yep, be a surplus. Uh, we decided to launch two wars uh, on a credit card. Uh, we cut taxes not true. twice uh, without finding offsetting costs for it. You did that or, too. Or ways mm -hmm. to pay for it. Uh, mm -hmm. A prescription drug plan. And then we had a massive recession. And, and so when I walked into office, we had a, a trillion dollar deficit. Uh, debt had mounted. And then we had to take a bunch of emergency measures. That cost money Wait saving it, the auto industry, Hold making on. sure that uh, the financial system got back on track. And so now what we've got to do is we've got to uh, pare down that deficit, get that debt under control. And the, I think the only way we've ever been able to do that effectively is when you do it in a balanced way. So you cut out spending you don't need. There are programs that don't work. And you know I, I tell uh, my, my Democratic friends all the time, if you're going to be uh, in favor of helping the American people, you can't just assume that every government program is working the way it should. It can work better. But what is also true is that uh, we're going to need to ask folks like you and me to do a little bit more. And if, if, if you and I are paying the same tax rates we did under Bill Clinton, then that helps uh, to close the deficit. And, and if we do those two things, then, uh, then we can manage very effectively and, and, and get our get our books in order. Now, do you remember what that number was? Well, was it t t $10 trillion? Was it? No, that? I don't remember what the number was precisely. Right. I know what that number is. I actually know what that number it's is. It's 16. Yeah, 16 trillion. Point something yeah. trillion. So. Well, and, and of course, six trillion of that just in the last three and a half years. Most of it I'm in ineffective and useless bailout of the auto industry. So, ladies and gents, you've got a lot of things going on here. But just remember, your president doesn't know how much the debt is. Yeah, that's your president, not mine. Does not know. And I don't know if the alternative is much better. My president got Alzheimer's and died years ago. Ronald, I miss you. Yeah. He misses me, too. I don't you know, know, when he used to chop wood, he used two double-sided two axes. axes. Yeah. Two axes. We should start a band and call it Two Axes. And when everyone asks us about it, we can just be like, there's this picture of Ronald Reagan with two axes. <laughs> Dude. Just walking through the woods like a badass. That's that's our band. Done. Done and done. Do Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of No Frequency Radio. The formal shout-outs to all the regular people who I shouted out to at the beginning of the show. There's simply no time. We're cutting into a day's time. And the lights have gone on, which... Is indicative of our time having run right the F out of so, the window. Have a great evening. Have a great evening. We'll see you all in a week. We will. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.